Hi, in this chapter, we'll learn about internal distribution builds, why we need them and how to create them. So let's get started. Internal distribution builds are ideal for sharing updates with team members, clients, allowing both technical and non-technical people stakeholders to provide feedback directly. Unlike development builds, these builds do not require running a development server, simplifying the testing process. There are a couple ways that we can distribute apps internally with our teammates or clients. Google and Apple provide built-in mechanisms to sharing apps internally. For example, Android, you can use Google Play Beta, and for iOS, you can use TestFlight. However, both of these traditional methods have their limitations. For example, TestFlight limits to one active build at a time. EAS simplifies this process. We can create a link for a build and then send this link to the client or teammates, and this link will contain instructions so that the user can install the application on the device. So for Android, this is a bit easier since you can just pass the APK file to the clients and they can just install it directly. But for iOS, we need to register all the devices that we want to be able to install our application in our Apple developer account. Once we do that, we can actually send a link to the client with instructions on how to enroll their device into the Apple developer account. And then we can send the link and they would be able to install it. So let's see how we can do that. Back in our project, and like I mentioned before, to be able to install an application on an iPhone, we need to register the device. So first of all, we can actually check the list of devices that we already have by saying EAS device. And by the way, a pro tip, if you don't know the command that you are looking for, you can just say dash H and this will return the commands that we can use with um, device. So I can say device, as you can see there, list to check the list of devices that I have. So I'll select my team and this will return the devices. So I have an iPhone 13 Pro I have an iPhone 15 Pro Max, which is the one that I have on screen. And actually I have a duplicate. So in this case, I actually want to clean up this a little bit. Let's go ahead and remove some of the devices. So let's use this command device delete. I'll say EAS device delete. And then this is going to ask me which team and then which device I want to delete. So I actually want to delete my iPhone 15 Pro Max and then show you how we can add it again, right? So I'll select this one and then say yes, and hit enter. Do you want to disable this device on your Apple account as well? Let's go ahead and say yes. Then I need to sign in into my account and the device has been disabled. So if I run again, EAS device list, I should be able to only see two. And these two actually are duplicated. So let's go ahead and delete one more. I'll select the duplicate and say yes. And yes, I need to sign in. And that's it. Now let's start from zero. Let's say that I want to invite my client, which is the owner of this iPhone to test the application and see the progress. So we need to create a preview build for that. But before we create the build, we need to register their device. So let's go ahead and say EAS device help again. I need to see the commands and let's register a new one. So I'll say EAS device create and hit enter. EAS CLI is detecting that I'm inside of a project and it's asking me if I want to use the, the account Beto at Expo and I'll say yes. Now I need to sign in into my Apple developer account, select my team, and then uh, register the device. Since in most of the cases, uh, our clients won't be technical, it's a good idea to use the website to invite them to register their devices. So in here we have this QR code that we, that we can share with them, or we can just simply copy this link and send them. So in this case, since I have here the QR code, let's open the camera and scan this QR code. I'm the client right at this point. So I'll open this and this is going to open the browser. And this is going to give me instructions on how to register my device so that I can test this application. So first of all, I need to download the profile. So let's go ahead and do that. Continue and allow. Okay, it's asking for my credentials and the profile it's been downloaded. So I can close this. Now you have to go to settings and click on the profile as you can see there and then install it. So let's do that. So I'm opening settings and I can see the profile downloaded. It's the first option. So let's go ahead and select that. This is going to register my device for development. So let's go ahead and install it. I need to provide my passcode and install. Boom, your device is ready to run internal distribution builds. Now, the next thing that I need to do is just create a new internal build. 
if you remember, we have this profile already set up. And the, th the only thing that I need to do at this point is just say EAS build platform iOS. And then the profile is going to be preview. You can run this as well for Android and then just get the file and send it to the client or install it directly on any Android device. But for iOS, we need to register the device. We already did that. So let's go ahead and kick off this build. Okay, guys. And at this point, we have a warning that is telling me that the provision for my new iPhone failed. And this could be because Apple is still processing my new device. So I'm pretty sure I'm seeing this warning because I already had this device. Um, so let's go ahead and click on this um, link. And this is going to take us to the list of devices in your Apple developer profile. And in here, I can just select my iPhone and enable manually at this point. So that should do it. Let's go back and I'll try to do this again. I run the command and I need to enter all my credentials. So I'll say yes, continue with my Apple account, select my team, reutilize my certificate and select these two devices. Okay, and this time I didn't get the warning because the device was enabled. Cool, so we are good now. Now let's wait a little bit. And the build is ready as you can see here. So from here, the user can simply scan this QR code or you can send this link to the client. So I'll just copy this link that we have in here and in here, in my browser, I can just paste this in here. So I'll delete this and then paste. Hit enter. This will take me to the Expo dashboard. So from here, you can see that we have the option to send to another device. And then to install this on a test device, you can simply scan this QR code. Uh, so you can send this to the user. But in this case, since I already have access to my dashboard, I can just press install directly. And this is giving me a warning that I have to enable developer mode. We learned how to do that in the previous chapters. So just go ahead and I already know that I have enabled developer mode. So I'll just go ahead and confirm. This is asking me if Expo Dev would like to open another application. So I'll say allow. And this is going to open split is in preview. So I'll say install. And once I do that, I can just go back and I can see that my app is in here and I'll put it right next to the dev one. Um, so now at this point I have split is preview and dev and it's easier to see if I search for them in here. So the dev one, it's actually going to depend on the server running locally, but the preview one is going to run like a standalone application. And this is great for clients and for testing. But in this case, I'm not able to enjoy the benefits of live reloading, right? So in this case, if I would want to delete the test, I would need to create another preview build and then send it to the user and ask them to install it. But this preview build, it's a great for clients and teammates since it's a standalone application. And that's it for this chapter. We learned how to create a preview build, how to create and delete devices from our developer account and how to invite users by sharing the link of the preview build. I hope you like this chapter. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.